I loved you on The Divide recently. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How is it jumping from a show that's so supernatural to a show that is so reality-based? You know, uh, the supernatural thing for me has always been more familiar as a sensation and dynamic than the real. Huh. So when I play real people, it feels supernatural anyway. So um, I don't find the transition all that hard. There was a flashback recently to uh, Eric and Pam's VHS store. And I was just wondering if you had like a spinoff, because I think that should be a spinoff. If Sheriff had his own spinoff, what do you think it would be outside of the world of True Blood? Where would he be at? What would he be doing? Oh, God, if Andy Belfler had his own spinoff show, um, I, what I want to, what I see, you know, just spitballing here is a sort of reality cooking show type thing. Um, like who can make the best pancake <laughs> or something. But um, originally, when you were talking about Sam or uh, Eric and Pam's um, video store, I thought you were going to say, had I gone to that store, what movie would I rent? Actually, that is one of my questions. So you're also psychic. Okay, well, Repo Man is yes! the answer. Awesome. <laughs> is that your movie or is that Andy's movie? Uh, that's definitely my movie. Yeah, if it was Andy's movie, it would probably be like Smoking the Bandit 3. Yeah, good call. Excellent call. If you could imagine the most spectacular death for Andy Belfler. Now, we don't know what happens on the rest of the season, but if you could see him go, what way would you like to see him go? Oh, wow. How would I like to see Andy Belfler die? Yeah. You know, um, probably not dissimilarly from kind of how he is in my imagination right now. Now that I'm not playing him anymore, I sort of feel like I opened the front door and told him to go get the paper and then just slammed it behind him. And I imagine him without a host just kind of wandering into traffic <laughs> and <laughs> meeting of you know and then and then there's just like uh, redneck carnage everywhere it's not gonna get any better than redneck carnage man <laughs> thank you so pam and eric have a video store that really got a lot of people's attention recently so if you went into that video store what would you rent oh my god <laughs> i've been into that video store i've seen that set <laughs> Um, I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to begin. It's, there are too many movies to rent. Way too many movies. Right. You could spend your lifetime watching those movies and you wouldn't get through them. I wonder if they'd have a selection of just all horror films. <laughs> some of them sound pretty horrible. Right? If, you, if you read the title, some of them are like, ah! I don't know if I could watch those, but it's, it's a pretty great collection. Okay, so your character has been getting cozy with Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Can you do an impression of Lafayette if he were possessed by the spirit of Tara. Oh, wow. I know, I'm shooting for the moon here. Yeah, um, I don't think I can. I know, I don't think anyone don't, can. No, I don't think that's It was actually possible. a trick question. Okay, well, okay. you tricked me, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, you'll have to ask Nelson when he comes over, see if he can do it. Well, a True Blood history question for you. Who do you think is one of the most powerful, scary foes that have, has been in the series this far, thus far? I'd say the main ad. Uh, I remember watching that, well, people with the black eyes going crazy, and it was the big meat tr tree meat. thing that they did. That's a scary foe, because you don't realize you're being seduced by this monster, and then everything goes crazy. Which is also sometimes like real life. We've all been there, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Has yeah. there been anything on this season of True Blood coming up that might be as gross as the meat tree that was from the mainted season? I don't know if anything is that gross. I, I was talking to the crew about that. It was real meat. They weren't messing around. And it sat there for days in the sun baking. I, I don't think anything could be that gross. What do you think is the coolest death that you've either seen or could imagine on this show? Um, it, I, th I think it has yet to come. Uh, I, I, there's a pretty epic one coming up uh, in a few few weeks. So I, I think keep an eye out for that. All right, we'll know it when we see it. Exactly, exactly. Thank you very much. When we saw the video store that belongs to Eric and Pam. Hilarious. Hilarious. What video would you rent from them? Probably, probably porn. I'll go straight to the porn section. I bet they have really good porn in there. Yeah, 
I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, children, I hope, hopefully children won't see this. Right, there's gonna be tons of beeps and clicks and edits in this, so that's, that's the way we like it, so it's all good. Now, who do you think has been the most terrifying foe out of anyone that's crossed through Louisiana in all the seasons of True Blood? Um, Eric Northman. Tell me why. Uh, because he uh, he put me in a dungeon for two weeks and tortured me. That's true. So um, I think he's the most terrifying foe. <laughs> when you're doing a shoot uh, that has you in the dungeon, how cush is that? Is it really preferable to instead of running around and getting covered in blood and stuff? I mean, on a real day-to-day -day level, is it nice to be trapped in a dungeon? No, it wasn't, especially covered in icky, sticky blood. Okay. And it's funny because when the blood first was thrown on me, I, uh, it, it like startled me a bit. I was like, oh my God. Uh, I felt like I got flashbacks of my death. Oh, <laughs> And now you're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, perhaps, of your own death. I am. <laughs> I am. And I'm suffering from, I think I have separation anxiety, because I'm going to miss my, my fellow, fellow cast members. Was there a lot of crying? Yeah. And hugging? Yeah. I mean, I cried on an interview when I, when I was asked the question, would you miss them? And I just started... I just started crying because yes, I'm gonna miss them. I'm mean, still children. Um, people, we had kids that were born during the show. We have dogs that we bring to set your know, love and our babies. And I'm, a, I feel like I'm gonna lose a lot of families. Who do you think was one of the most terrifying foes that anyone ever fought on all of the seasons of True Blood? Yeah, um, you know the most menacing I thought was. Uh, Weird. It's a, it's a toss up between Russell Edgington and Franklin, because Franklin was crazy. Uh, and but I feel like Dennis really sort of played that character so well um, that he just wouldn't die. I mean, you had to put him in like cement, to make him, you know, and then he came back, you know. But it was just like I, I, I just he was so great at it that you unbelievable at it. You can't even bury him in cement. That's the problem. It's like, what do you do to that guy? Yeah, no, exactly. Nothing. Right. <laughs> it's horrible. Do you think, like, what parallels do you think the show, in all of its craziness, has actually drawn to our real life? Uh, you know, human rights. Uh, just, I think, there's a lot of, a, a lot of parallels. I mean, a lot of parallels. I'm trying to think of something uh, off the top of my head, but just the way in which we treat each other. Treat, treat each other. I mean, you have this small town, and you have all these things happening in this small town. And then I think in the world, we have all these people, and we have things happening to us, and we react in different ways. And what I love about True Blood is that we're so raw with it that sometimes people can't handle what's raw and what's real. But that's actually what you would do in that situation. If you saw Maynard coming and chasing you down the street, I think you would probably be going a little crazy, you know, and things would be a little weird. Um, if you heard other people's thoughts, you would probably be a little, like, you know, insane. So I just feel like it's, it's, it's neat that, um, it, it's neat how they've sort of, it, it's neat that it's raw like the, our world is. It, it, it's, it's true. You know what I mean? If that, if that makes any sense. I love the rawness of it, yeah. It was really hard to say goodbye to Tara. Like, I, I got really upset when she left. So walking around this year's Comic-Con, have you had any fan interactions with people that feel the same I do? Yeah. I've had a lot of people come up to me so far, and they're like, you know, you know I was really upset. I'm not happy about it. No, I mean, it's not cool. You know, like, they're really serious, and I'm just like, okay. But that's cool. it makes me happy because that means people really cared for her. Because I, I also thought that there's a lot of people that, you know, couldn't stand Tara because she's so crazy. You know, but when she was gone, people were like, no. And I, I mean, I loved it. I loved it. Right. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. So your character is such a badass and has been for so long in True Blood, but has this really amazing vulnerable side. Do you hope that people are noticing that and maybe taking some notes for their real life? The, yeah, the, on t Tara's vulnerable side and it's taking, yeah. Because I mean, and lifetimes are hard. And uh, sometimes our defenses get the best of us. And I think it's 
it, it's nice when we see Tara soften and kind of go, you know what, there's no reason for me to react this way in this situation because actually this person's trying to help me. Mm -hmm. Like, and I love those moments with Tara when we saw her sort of t soften and take off that hard shell that she carries all the time. That's why we miss her. It makes me sad, I wanna give you a hug. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Talk about directing television mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. How do you go about deciding who is going to direct certain episodes of True Blood? Great question. Um, the reason that, that if, you, if you're a Breaking Bad fan, you'll always re re see that, uh, that Brian Cranston directs the first episode. Um, the reason that they gave me the first episodes to direct is because you ultimately get prep time. Mm -hmm. So you get to prep for like two or three weeks leading up to shooting and that means I'm not having to act I'm not having to do costume fittings I'm not having to do all of that stuff that I would ordinarily be doing during the season so consequently it's usually the first episodes that the actors get um, we close out this year with um, uh, Scott Wynant and he's been with us since the very beginning he did episode two of the first season he's amazing and he's a very He's somebody who's got a great feel for emotional depth and, and, and strength. That's his big strength. So they gave him that episode. Um, and then there'll be somebody else who's kind of really good with the dynamic stuff who'll do that when there's an episode like that coming up. But mostly it's, it's how the cards fall because it, it's, it's about whether when people are available, really. I never knew how that how that is determined. I mean, as a, as as an actor, it's kind of amazing. As an actor on the show, it's amazing to be get, to be able to get the pilot, the first episode, because you get to set up the seas, and it has to have a bit of a wow factor, and and it's exciting because you're coming back and everybody's really energized. So that that that's that's a, a lot of fun. So, what would you say is your greatest strength as a director of television? Toot your own horn. Um, because I'm an actor, I know how to talk to actors. I've also, you know, it's a great privilege because when you've spent five years, six years getting to know somebody really well, you get to see what they react to well. You get to see when a director asks them something, how they react to it, the way they're being asked. So sometimes you do want to push buttons. Sometimes you do want to jab. But it's working out how to jab in a productive way because I'm an actor who doesn't take well to being shoved. So I try not to do that. I try to be, I try to be generous and kind and loving and massage and, and get, get the thing that, you know, get really, make the actor feel that there's no failure. So is it fair to say that you describe yourself as a director that's good at a productive jab and a massage? I've got very strong hands. Are you planning on continuing on directing? Yeah, I've got a few things actually. Um, probably not this year. Um, I don't know whether you know our show well, but Dennis O'Hare, who played Russell Edgington, yes. has written a script, a film script that I'm going to direct. Good. Yeah, that's next year. Um, we were hoping to go this year, but I think it'll be next year. Um, there's a series that I've got that I am going to direct. But again, don't know when it's going to be. Uh, there's something else that's just come to me that I would be acting in, but I would definitely do some directing on that. So it's, um, there's lots, lots and lots and lots. But at the moment, I am vacationing. And Amazing. I are stopping, which is the very first time. I'm not very good at stopping. I'm not very good at getting off the bus. So um, very much looking forward to stopping. Well, then my last question is, what do you and your lovely wife enjoy doing on your vacation? Anna grew up in New Zealand, and and because the ozone there is is particularly much the, the the hole in the ozone is bigger than it is where I'm from, she doesn't really go out in the sun. But we're going to a place where I'm going to literally force her to sit in the sun for a bit and get some vitamin D, although we say vitamin D, but I'm going to get some of that D stuff into her. And may I point out how, how ironic it is that you, having played a vampire in True Blood, are forcing her to go out in the sun. Yeah, I mean, look, I've got this. <laughs> it's time to get rid of the farmer's tan and, and get it so that it all blends together. Yeah, it's time, Stephen Moyer. It's time. Thank you. Your uh, handsome husband said that 
he is going to take you on vacation and force you to sit in the sun. What do you have to say about that? Um, well, I wear a lot of sunscreen, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, good. It's more the sitting still part ah. that also, I'm not sure who he's kidding because two toddlers go in two opposite directions. Nobody sits. It's chasing. Right. Absolutely. So maybe if we can corral them into some small area with a grandparent. <laughs> then maybe you can sit for five seconds. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. No, we are. We're, we're going to try to get some chill out time, but you know. Also had to point out to him that it was ironic that a vampire was telling you to sit in the sun. Well, this is what I really look like, skin tone wise. They warm <laughs> no you up a lot on True Blood, huh? No spray tan today, no blonde hair. And he's naturally was like a blonde kid and has like really tanned and stuff and has beautiful skin tone that I'm very envious of. No, you're doing good. Don't worry about it. No, but he has pigments and I got none. Right. You're, I'm basically with you on oh that. I think we're in the same category. Yeah, more or less. So I feel your pain. So in Eric and Pam's VHS store, what do you think you would rent as a film? Honestly, I'm not really a big film buff. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't really grow up in a household where we watched a lot of TV or films. Um, and then I started working, and then I didn't really have any time. But, you know, I could see a few things here and there, but it wasn't really a big part of our, our lifestyle growing up. We had more of the go outside and play kind of parents. Weird. <laughs> yeah, but I grew up in New Zealand. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's normal like that. Which is where everyone goes outside and does stuff and everyone's very fit. What's your favorite outdoor activity then? Oh God, um, I mean, I love running outside. Nice. A good early morning beach run. And actually that served you really well on the show too. Because I'm constantly being chased by somebody. <laughs> Because there's usually somebody coming to get me. Done and done. Yes. Who do you think is the scariest foe that has... It's so loud in here right now. I know, right? Who is the scariest foe that everybody in Bon Temp has ever faced in all the seasons of True Blood? Russell Edgington. Say again? Russell Edgington, Dennis O'Hare. You can't even put that dude under cement. He gets out. I mean, as an actor, as a human being, as a character, it was like when we finally really had to let him go, like we couldn't con 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 conjure up another way to have him come back. I literally was, I was like, I was like making a cup of coffee and crafty, and because Alex has to save him, and he was just like, I'm just not gonna do it. It's like they can't force me. And I was like, that's a great plan. It's like, if you if you refuse to stake him, then he's not dead. Then he's not dead. <laughs> Done. And the whole cast revolts. Yes, exactly. We stage a protest <laughs> where we all refuse to take our clothes off. Hey, okay, slow down. Slow down just a second. <laughs> don't get crazy. You don't. You can refuse to stake somebody, but keep the, keep the sex scenes for some of us. Okay, thank you, yeah. It occurred to me this morning, yeah. I have forgotten by this point and was happy to remind myself that you have won an Oscar. Where do you keep it? Um, it's on a like, mantle piece in my, like, next to a bunch of other stuff in my kitchen. Did you ever dress it up? He got eyelashes for uh, Oscar night. And I did tweet a picture of it. You can look it up. It's really cute. Spectacular. And then I got somebody, I got a bunch of people telling me that I was like an, a bad Oscar winner because he was tarnished. And I was like, I didn't really know how you, I was like, I hadn't maintained him. And I was like, well, I didn't know there was like, how you're, what you're supposed to do with those. You could probably di direct dial the Academy and they'll tell you. Well, but that would make so much sense. <laughs> I just assumed that, you know, they age as gracefully as we all do. <laughs> In Eric and Pam's video store, which video would you rent? Um, I mean, you know, there's there's a course that like the 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 B movie, all the B movies. It's like full of B movies. But you know, I'm gonna go against the grain and go with uh, a movie I've never seen. Oh. I don't know why this movie popped into my head, but I'm gonna go with Regarding Henry. <laughs> wow. Fascinating. You think they've got Regarding Henry in there? 
I think that they do. I yeah. think it's a selection of really classy films. They've got, they've got yeah, they've got some of the classic uh -huh. '90s movies, and, yep. and uh, as well as the Roger Corman, you know, <laughs> B movie stuff. And might I suggest that if Sam Rilat went in, that he might pick up Old Yeller? Oh well, I mean, uh, you know, the dog reference, yeah, for yeah, sure, you know. Uh, yeah, what else? He might get some westerns. Um, you know, maybe a John Wayne movie. Nice. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think that the world of True Blood is ready for a shifter president? No, but they will be in four years, ah. or or six years, wherever it is. Like not this one, but the next one for sure. Yeah. I love the fault in our stars. Oh, thanks. And I was wondering if it felt really different to be a part of a project that your children could very easily watch as opposed to something like True Blood, which you probably have to wait a few years for. Yeah, I, on, yeah, it was so great because so much, so much of the stuff that I do is, uh, and just for ran, just it's just random, uh, but it ends up being very racy, and a lot of my family, you know, can't watch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one is going to be. It's, I think it's going to, you know, live on hopefully, and through many generations. And I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for my kids to see it. It's a beautiful story, beautiful book, um, really meaningful, and yeah, I was very happy to be a part of it. And my final question, out of all of the scary people and things in True Blood, which foe do you think is the scariest out of all seasons? Wow, that's a good one. Um, you know, Marianne was, she made the tornadoes and stuff, but she was kind of sexy. Uh, I mean, Russell Edgington is pretty scary. You know, uh, uh, Jelko, Jelko Ivanic, who played uh, the Magister, that guy's really creepy. That's I a great Jelko. answer. I love Jelko. I mean, Ooh. but he, that's a creepy character. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's something fun about Russell Edgington, but, but the Magister, I just don't want to be hanging around with that. Right. That's like you feel his coldness, you know? Yeah, there was nothing fun about him at all. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank exactly. you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>